So I'm going to try to do something a little bit different today, um, something I haven't really done in a while, which is completely go off script and just talk a little bit about some of this records that I picked up in this kind of big haul, at least for me, just the other weekend in Fort Worth. I went to this little place called uh, Docs Records and Vintage, and it, it kind of became almost instantaneously my, my new favorite place to... Uh, to go crate digging here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I hadn't really been over there. Um, I've been a longtime fan of Josie Records here, but I haven't really found a place that is almost like a hidden gem in, in, in a sense. Uh, not that it wasn't like packed or anything as it was, but it was, it was just a really cool, like down-to-earth place. A ton of people there. There was three different bands that were playing that afternoon, so I got some local live music in as well, uh, which was a lot of fun. And um, I ended up spending a few hours there. Uh, a lot of it spent in the seven inch section. There was just so many great obscure things in there, and I didn't even like scratch the surface. So I'm gonna share a few of the things I got in there. I'm gonna start out with the 12 inches and then dig into some of the seven inches. So if there's anything in here that you want to see me talk a little bit more about, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll put together a video on those. I've already done one um, and I'll share a little bit more about that as well. First off, I have Summer in Abaddon by Pinback. This is, to my knowledge, the, uh, as far as I can tell, the original pressing. It's the only one on Discogs that is on black vinyl. I got it at a pretty solid price, about 25 bucks. And um, it's, been, it's been my favorite pinback album forever. I've got a handful of the other records by them in my collection. And uh, it just, this Syracuse is just absolutely great. It's got Now Photo, Blue, Sender, Syracuse, Blood on Fire, This Red Book, Soaked, The Yellow Ones, AFK. Just so many great songs. If you like the kind of angular indie rock that Pinback has, I strongly recommend this one, uh, checking this one out. And Pinback is just, it's, it, they're just fun. So there's that one. Next up is Saint Etienne, Tales from the Turnpike House. I've been a Saint Etienne fan for freaking ever. And uh, this dates back to like the early 2000s, maybe even the late 90s. Well, probably not the late 90s, probably the early 2000s, probably early college, mid-college for me. And Tales from the Turnpike House was their 2005 record. I remember when this came out, I was uh, working as a DJ at KZUU in Pullman. Uh, at the little independent radio station there, and um, this came out, and I just became obsessed with a good thing and stars above us off of this record, which tend to be the two that most often get mentioned when talking about Tales from the Turnpike House. Saint Etienne, of course, is a uh, kind of electronic group, uh, electronic pop group out of the UK. They've been making music since the early '90s. Their most recent one came out. Uh, just in the last couple years, and they are continuing to go strong, continuing to churn out really great records. I've got a huge selection of their stuff in my collection, and I've actually covered them a number of times here as well with some of their more recent albums. So check that one out. Next up, Smoke Ring for My Halo by Kurt Violin. If you look at this price here, it is ludicrous. Six dollars for a Kurt Vile record, uh, even used, is is pretty phenomenal. Of course, it's not in the best condition. Visually, I would mark it as probably a low VG, if not a high good plus, which means that it's kind of beat to hell. You've got plenty of, of scratches and scuffs on it. Whoever owned this record before did not take care of it. The sleeve itself has some light edgeware. There's no major bends or anything along those lines, but overall, um, it, it's just not in the greatest condition, hence the price. 
it does play relatively nice. There's a little bit of surface noise. Smoke Ring for my Halo came out in 2011. One thing that I thought was really super interesting is that this includes Baby's Arms, which was released on Kurt Vile's, I believe, 2019 LP, Bottle It In as well. So he kind of remade that song for that record, which is a phenomenal record, by the way. That one is the one that truly got me into and obsessed with anything and everything Kurt Vile. Though I had been a fan before, I hadn't really devoted much in my collection to him. So there it is, Kurt Vile, Smoke Ring for my Halo. This is another one that um, I, I didn't even realize that he had released it on vinyl, or at least I hadn't really done much digging on it. Whitest Boy Alive and the album Rules. This is the guy's second album under this moniker, and it is Erland Oi, who has released a number of records under his own name, and he is also one half of the duo Kings of Convenience. Here it is a uh, four-piece outfit kind of creating this interesting kind of European-based um, electro-pop mixed with uh, indie rock, and I have been a fan of The Whitest Boy Alive for quite some time, pretty much since the, uh, the late aughts when these records were released. And this one, when I put it on the turntable, you know, I hadn't really listened to him in a long time. I put it on the turntable and I was just blown away. The depth that this record has in comparison to the, um, the digital version is, I, I likened it to, uh, say, other records that have that, that quality that you just don't hear in digital versions. Um, there are so many different nuances that you, you find in some of these records. I likened it to, uh, say, Always in their album from last year, Blue Rev, uh, which I think drew out a lot of the more shoegazy elements from that band that you just don't hear on the digital versions. And so um, Rules has that quality for me. And so this is gonna be a, a, big, a big one in heavy rotation in, in the coming months. And the great thing is there are still copies of this out there at decent prices. I didn't find too many on Discogs, but I was able to find some on Amazon. And I'll include a link down in the description if you want to check that out. And it's a decent price, pretty much uh, not too much more than I paid for this used copy. So I paid about 20 bucks for this. So you can find it for about 25 these days, US. Overseas, there are still other copies available too. This is another one, not entirely a grail, but it's been on my want list for a long time and I never pulled the trigger when it was in print. It went out of print from Sub Pop in the last, I would say, six months or so. This is Wolf Parade and their sophomore LP at Mount Zoomer. I love this album and just like Rules, there's a lot of depth and nuance in this record that you just don't get from the digital versions. So the price of these have gone quite um, gone up quite a bit, so you're looking at 40, 50 bucks. I found this one for 17. As far as I can tell, they added it to their, um, their inventory back in about January, so right around the time that it went out of print on Sub Pop and Discogs and all of those other digital areas. So uh, this one hadn't gotten updated. I was able to find it for really just 18 bucks. Um, now, with black vinyl versions like this, there's always that possibility that it will get reissued, and I would not be surprised if Sub Pop reissues uh, this one, or, or just really not even a reissue, a repress of it, so it's not even a new version. It's just a, uh, a new run of the same version, same runouts and matrix and everything, all of that. So you could see the prices come down of this in the future as they repress it and, um, and, and re-release the same version. This one includes one of my favorite plus 10 minute indie songs, well, plus 10 minute songs in general, Kissing the Beehive. It is a, a phenomenal, phenomenal track, and it's got all those things that you really want in a long song. It actually sent me down a big rabbit hole of what are my favorite, you know, eight, nine, 10 plus minute songs in my collection. So I, I may be pulling together some more of that in the future. If you'd like, to, if you'd like to, to see some of that, let me know down in the comments and I'll, I'll fast track that one a bit. 
Now on to the seven inches. This is a, a, a one I took a little bit of a gamble on. It is called Arimoto and it is a seven inch uh, that is kind of like a psych folk out of Japan. And um, it was a, a little pricey for a seven inch that I'm taking a a gamble on it was like eight, I think eight bucks or something like that but there really aren't any other copies out there and the way I shop for records is if I take a gamble on something I want to make sure that it's a decent price so I can turn around and at least make my money back and uh, this is one of those when it comes down to it I, I actually kind of really like it it's it's a lot of fun and good deep psych folk from Japan next up is this split single from Tree People and Archers of Loaf. I never thought I would find something like this here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but Tree People is actually Doug Marsh and his kind of grunge era, late 80s, early 90s band out of um, the Pacific Northwest. Archers of Loaf, of course, is full-on grunge era as well. This split seven inch is actually a double seven inch. So you've got tree people on one side, you've got archers of loaf on the other, but it's split across two different seven inches. And you just don't see this around at all. I'm a huge Built to Spill fan. I've covered them a few times here. And so seeing something by tree people was super unexpected. Next up is this little 7-inch by a English punk band called Red Letter Day. This one's kind of interesting because um, you've got the, the either Japanese, Chinese lettering there, but it's an English band with really no relation to Japan as far as I can tell. Red Letter Day is, like I said, an English punk band that uh, formed in about 1984. They released um, albums between 88 and 2005. They were active from 84 to 2009 and then I think they reunited about 2021 which I wasn't really familiar with them before this but it was kind of interesting to see and I was curious about it so that uh, I figured I'd add to my collection. This is Red Stars Theory, two songs by them in a paper bag series which um, is super super fascinating kind of like a psych folk uh, mellow folk album. They released some stuff back in the 90s. Saw this, I, I couldn't pass it up. It's actually really, really good. Now, Red Stars Theory can be a little bit hit or miss for me. Um, some of their stuff is almost too mellow, just doesn't have enough uh, catchy hooks and stuff like that, but this does not have that problem. Next up, The Stepford Husbands. <laughs> I love the the name of this band, of course, you know, play off the Stepford Wives. Um, Stepford Husbands were a band that had super, super kind of garage resurgence era uh, leanings from the mid 80s to the mid 90s. This one includes a few songs, Seeing is Believing and um, I'm Rode Out, and it was released in 1985. I have one other thing from the Stepford Husbands, an LP, I think it might be their lone LP, that uh, is actually pretty decent. I kind of stumbled upon them when I went through this kind of massive, like, 80s era garage rock resurgence. A lot of really nerdy bands back then, uh, and this was one of them that kind of caught my eye, uh, Stepford Husbands. Next is a pair of indie, kind of like indie pop LPs by a band out of Texas called Tella Novella. They aren't available on Discogs. They're sold out and being in Texas, um, I thought I'd give them a try. Now, one interesting thing about Tella Novella is that this band is pretty much a duo. They do have other members who join on occasion. One half of that duo is Jason Cronus of Voxtrot. Of course, Voxtrot reunited last year and, and started kind of reissuing some stuff. They put out an album called Early Music, which is their first two EPs. Super, super good. Voxtrot has been one of my favorite bands since they formed uh, and since they came onto my radar in about 2005, 2006. I am a completist and I pretty much have everything by them. Telenovela isn't quite as upbeat, um, but there's some really good stuff on here. So I probably overpaid a little bit for them, but like I said, 
I'm not seeing them at all on Discogs. I'm not seeing them on um, on Bandcamp. I'm not seeing them on uh, eBay or anything like that. So kind of a, a, a cool little addition there. This is a Record Store Day release on Sub Pop featuring Shearwater and Sharon Van Etten. It is basically, it's not a split single, it is basically both of them coming together to create songs. Stop Dragging My Heart Around is uh, on this side and the other is A Wake for the Minotaur. So this was kind of cool, you know, low price. I, I figured, what the heck, I'm a big fan of Sharon Bannett and I've got a number of her seven inch singles. I've got a bunch of her LPs in my collection. So good to add that as well. I am surprised. This is a grail for me, this one right here. I saw it and I was like, I know this cover. And I looked at, looked at it a little bit closer and it blew my mind. To find this in a used bin for $3.50 when you just, you don't see it anywhere in the United States. To get this over to the States will at least cost me $30 after shipping. This is X Lovers and the song Photographs. The B-side is Weightless. I am a huge fan of X Lovers. In fact, right there, I covered X Lovers and their EP relatively recently. I picked up their debut LP from 2009. P-Vine in Japan just reissued it. Um, this X Lovers is phenomenal. Neither of these tracks is on that LP. That LP finally, since 2009, just this year, received a vinyl release. So I ordered that and had it shipped over from Japan. Uh, but to find this in the wild, uh, if, if you want to know what this kind of sounds like, because it, it is kind of hard to figure out you know, where to listen to them. Um, this kind of is a blend. Think of like the pains of being pure at heart, early stuff, their self-titled debut, but maybe a little bit more stripped back, acoustic on occasion for these two songs. Their debut uh, LP, um, Moth, is probably a little bit more in line with that. Maybe a little bit less fuzzed out guitars. X Lovers, this has been a grail for me and I can't believe I found it for just $3.50. Menomina from the Portland area, another one I didn't think I would see here in Texas, but this is for their song Posh Isolation, backed with Tongue Track, and um, I'm a big fan of Menomina. This doesn't quite live up to their um, debut LP and kind of what they produced after, but it is a good example of some early tracks by them. Oh, a, a few more like grails here for me. Mount Erie, a split with the love of everything. Now this is Mount Erie. Of course, Mount Erie is Microphone's frontman, Phil Elverham out of Anacortes, where I used to live, you know, just one town away. And I would see him at the record store. I got to see him a few times, you know, play local shows. Um, to like 30, 40 people. It was absolutely amazing. And this Mount Erie song is called In the World, and it is kind of Mount Erie stripped back, which is really my favorite Mount Erie. I love his kind of fuzzed out, more experimental, kind of post-rocky almost type stuff, but when he is stripped down to just his acoustic guitar, maybe with a, a backup vocalist like he did on um, Lost Wisdom Part 1 and, and Lost Wisdom Part 2 more recently, he really shines. His, his songwriting skills just really kind of come out and I love that one. And this is my introduction to The Love of Everything, but that song is pretty solid as well. This is Lanterns by The Microphone, so predating his Mount Erie stuff. Lanterns, Microphones, really amazing, amazing stuff there. Of course, his album, The Glow Part Two, is absolutely phenomenal. It is essential indie listening for those of lo-fi, experimental indie rock. Next up is this kind of fun little seven inch flexi disc by Mud Honey. It features a demo version of their track, Something So Clear. I can't remember what album it was off of, but it is, uh, it, it is great stuff. There. On the back, there's a little promotion for back issue flexi disc series, uh, which is kind of cool as well. So, um, yeah, this is a kind of a fun little, 
find from the grunge era. 1991 Sub Pop Records. Possibly little known fact, Mud Honey's Mark Arm is actually the distribution guy for Sub Pop Records. It has been for ages. So whenever you order something from uh, Sub Pop Mega Store or Mega Center, uh, you will actually get, you know, Mark Arm will be the one sending it to you. And then finally, I've already covered this one. It is Furniture Hushle with Mountain Goats. Martin, Mountain Goats being John Darnielle, and um, he's been making music since the 90s. If you want to learn a little bit more about this one, check out this video right here because this is the one I talk about it. And if you want me to see, uh, to focus in on any of the ones I've covered today in this stack, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to check out that one, and I'll see you next time.